Hello everyone and welcome to another video on building serverless applications on AWS with .NET. In this video, we're going to have another look at AWS AppRunner. In last week's video, we just took a really simple container image from the ECR public gallery and deployed that to an AppRunner service. So in this video, let's have a look how you can actually deploy your .NET applications to AWS AppRunner. And to do that, I've actually created a brand new web API. This is just using the, re the .NET new web API, and we've got the weather forecast controller that I'm sure we are all familiar with by now that allows us to get some random weather forecasts. The only other thing I've added additionally is a, a route on the base of the API just to return an okay result, just so that if we need to do any health checks or anything like that, that the route of our API that returns a 200 status score. This will give us a good example for the purposes of this video. So what changes do we need to make to our application stack now? So if you remember from the last video, and if you haven't seen that, I'll pop a link in the description. We've got a couple of IAM roles, both for our application to assume. So this was where you would give permissions to things like DynamoDB, SQS, SNS, etc. We've got the role that AppRunner is going to use to build our application. So in this instance, we'll need to give this role permissions to an ECR repository. Then we've got the subnets that we're going to deploy the application into. And then of course, the actual service itself. So there's a couple of things we're going to need to do here to actually deploy this application. And the first is we're going to need to create a ECR repository. Now I've got some lines of code on my other screen that I'm just going to copy over so you don't have to watch me type. The first is we're going to create a ECR repository, create, there we are, ECR. We're going to create a new Elastic Container Registry repository. We're going to set this up called runner ECR repo. We want to make sure that our tags are immutable and that we scan our images on push. Of course, we want these images to be secure. And then with the beauties of the AWS CDK, I can just say application code repository grant pull. Remember, ECR only needs to be able to pull these images. It doesn't need to be able to push them. Grant pull, and I want to grant the pull to my ECR access role. So now this role that Pruner is going to assume on build now has access to be able to pull images from our ECR repository. And the next thing we need to do is actually update this source section here. So previously we were saying that we we'll source our image from the ECR public gallery. Well, actually now we want to source this just from ECR. And that means that we need to set some ECR props, not ECR public props. And these properties are slightly different because we're now deploying a private ECR. So the first thing we need to do is pass in our repository and that can just be our application code repository. And then we have that same image configuration option that we had in the last video. And my .NET application is actually going to run on port 8080. So I'm going to say that when Runner is health checking and it's looking to route traffic to my actual container, do that on port 8080. And then I need to pass in a tag. If I don't pass in a tag, it'll just be the latest. I'm actually just going to hard code that to latest just for the purposes of making this really explicit. And that's the only change we actually need to make to our Runner service. So what I've done here is We've created a ECR repository top here, and then we've given our application access role, our build role, sorry, access to our application code repository. And then we've simply changed our app runner service instead of sourcing from ECR public, that is now sourcing from ECR itself. And we're passing in our application code repository, the port that our doc application is going to run on, in this case, 8080, and the fact we want to use the latest tag from ECR. The other really interesting feature you can set with AppRunner is this auto deployments enabled. And if I set this to true, every time I push a new image to ECR, that will then automatically cause AppRunner to redeploy. Now there is a cost to in, in turning on this feature, but it's a really useful one that will allow you to really quickly deploy new changes to your app runner application. Now, this might be something you want to do in your dev environment, maybe your gamma environments, but 
doing this in production, you may want to do that. I'll be completely to you and your tolerance for risk and how mature your CI CD pipelines are. I'm going to set this to true for the moment though, and we'll leave auto deployments enabled. Now, one of the challenges you might face when you first set up this, this configuration to use ECR and AppRunner is that if you were to deploy both of them, both the repository and AppRunner at the same time, of course, your ECR repository would get created first, then AppRunner would try and create the AppRunner service and it would try and pull the latest tag, which at that moment in time won't actually exist because ECR the repository only has been created, right? So what I'm actually going to do to deploy this for the first time is I'm actually going to comment out temporarily the entirety of my runner service. So this way I can let CDK and CloudFormation deploy my new infrastructure, namely the ECR repository. I can then push my custom application code to ECR, and then I can re-enable my app runner service and redeploy that so that my ECR repository actually has something in it. So let's go off to the terminal now. I'm going to make sure I'm in the right directory. I am. And then I'm just going to run a CDK deploy. And this will now go off and just create that ECR repository and change the permissions for my ion role to actually allow my ion role to read, to pull images from ECR. I will be back in just a moment once this has finished deploying. Now that I have my ECR repository available, you see I've got my app runner ECR repository, I can actually go ahead and push a image to this, this repository now. And of course, normally you would do this as part of some kind of CICD pipeline. I'm just going to do this manually for the purposes of this video. And ECR is really useful because it gives us actually the, the commands required to both build and push our container image. If I go back to my terminal window, copying that first command, I can run my ECR login, and this is going to log me in to my ECR repository. Next, command one, done. Then I need to actually build my Docker image. And if we just go back to Rider for a moment, and if we look at my actual API code, I've got a pretty simple Docker file here. I'm actually using the preview version of .NET 8, only because I ran a .NET new, and I've got .NET 8 installed. So I'm actually going to build this against the .NET 8 preview Alpine, just to keep it nice and small. That's why I use Alpine. So if we go back to the terminal now and navigate to that folder, which is think under runner API, there we are. I can now run my Docker build command, and this is going to go off and build that Docker image using the configuration defined in my Docker file. Okay, my Docker image has finished building now. So let's go and grab the next command where I'm just going to tag my Docker image with the right tag for my ECR repository and to be the latest version. And then I'm going to push that to ECR and that's going to push that newly built image up to my ECR repository. While that's just doing that, let's flip back into Rider and we'll actually just uncomment the the app runner service because we're now going to have that latest tag available in the ecr repository so we can now redeploy our application with the cdk and actually deploy our app runner service so let's go back to the terminal now now that that has completed and pushed i can go back up to the folder that had my cdk file in and just run a cdk deploy now remember all of the other infrastructure the network the repository that's already deployed so all this CDK deploy is going to do is just deploy our printer service. Now, this can take a couple of minutes, especially on the first deploy. So I'll be back in just a moment and we'll have a look at our deployed.net application. That has finished deploying now. Let's flick over to the AWS console and we can see we've got our printer service there waiting and ready to go. Let's hit our endpoint. And of course, we get that 200 status call back straight away because that's what we defined as the root of our API. Remember, for health checks. Now, let's access our weather forecast endpoint. If I could spell forecast correctly, there we are. And we get our weather forecast. If I hit refresh a few times, you see we've got that consistent and good performance that we expect from running.NET. That is just how easy it is 
to get started using AWS at Perunifio.net applications. All you need to do is create that Docker file, push that to Amazon ECR, and the rest is good to go. Now you've got production ready scale applications running in a completely serverless way. Hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, if you have, please like and please subscribe. And I will see you all next time.